Hello and welcome into this week's Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rewind Show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward from R&N. On today's Cup Rewind, we're looking back at Saturday night's Digital Ally 400. Went a little bit into overtime, 271 laps, 406 and a half miles, around the 1.5 mile Kansas Speedway in Kansas City, Kansas. Seven caution flags in this race for a total of 41 laps. This was a fairly exciting race. Uh, I think this was probably the first good mile and a half race we've had this season. We've had some pretty big duds with this package on mile and a half tracks this season. I think this was the first good race we've seen out of this package on a mile and a half track. And I don't know if that was because it was a night race or if NASCAR's tweaked with this package enough now that they've actually figured out how to give a good product on a mile and a half track. So um, we'll see as we go forward, but nevertheless, this was a really good race. First caution lap number 30 was a competition caution. Check tire wear from the rain. The preceding day or so. Lap 61, the 11 of Denny Hamlin uh, spun in turn two. If I remember correctly, I believe he had a flat tire that caused this. Lap 80 was the end of stage one. Kevin Harvick took the stage one victory. Remember, he won this race last season. Stage two concluded lap 160. Nothing of note happening in, in stage two in terms of cautions, at least. Stage two went to Chase Elliott. Remember, Chase Elliott won the fall race at Kansas last year. They were really the two fastest cars early on in the race, uh, which is not surprising as they were the two that pretty much dominated last season at this track. Stage number three was where we had a few incidents. Lap 219... Uh, debris on pit road from the six of Ryan Newman brought out the caution. Lap 241 debris in turn two brought out the caution. And lap 264 fluid from the 95 of Matt DiBenedetto's engine expiring in turn two brought out the final caution of the night. 23 lead changes among 12 drivers in this race. That is a really high number for a mile and a half track, especially of late. Kevin Harvick led the most laps, 104 laps on the night for Kevin Harvick. 63 laps went to Alex Bowman. I think we're finally seeing the true potential of Alex Bowman. He had a super fast car in this race. 45 laps went to Chase Elliott. 12 laps apiece went to Brad Keselowski and Clint Boyer. 11 laps led by Ricky Stenhouse. 10 laps went to Chris Buescher. 7 laps led by Kurt Busch. 4 laps went to William Byron. And 1 lap apiece went to Matt Tift, Kyle Busch, and Ross Chastain. All right, so let's get into the results. Kevin Harvick led the most laps in this race and won stage one. Chase Elliott won stage two. Alex Bowman led a bunch of laps. Did any of them win this race? No, they didn't. Brad Keselowski snookered him right at the end, was able to power through the final restarts, got by Alex Bowman before the final caution, and was able to hold the lead on the overtime restart, take the win, in his worth forward this week. Third win of the season for Brad Keselowski. A very hot start to the season for the driver of that number two car. Alex Bowman had to settle for second once again. He's knocking on the door right now. I think that first win for Alex Bowman is just around the corner. I think Hendrick Motorsports has finally turned the corner. As you see here, three Hendrick cars in the top ten. William Byron a little off last night, but... All in all, very fast night for Hendrick Motorsports, and I think maybe as a whole that organization has finally turned the corner here, and they're back to closer to where they used to be. Eric Jones came home with a strong third, Chase Elliott in fourth. Clint Boyer rounded out the top five. Clint Boyer was not happy with Eric Jones at the end of the race. Jones pulling a block on Clint Boyer when Boyer had a huge run on that overtime restart. Uh, Boyer easily would have gotten to second had Jones not blocked him and Boyer not happy with that move um, so words exchanged a little bumping on the cooldown lap uh, tempers flaring at the Kansas night race 
The rest of your top 10, Jimmy Johnson, Kirk Bush, Kyle Larson. A strong top 10 finish for Tyler Reddick in ninth. Kudos to Tyler Reddick, the top RCR car in this race. And Chris Buescher rounded out the top 10. 11 through 20th, Eric Almarola down here in 12th. Kevin Harvick, after winning the first stage, second in the second stage, and leading the most laps on the night, 104, had to settle for a 13th place finish. Joey Logano, way off near the end of the race, finished 10th in the first stage, was not in the top 10 in the second stage, and just really kind of off all night. 15th and one lap down for Joey Logano. Denny Hamlin, after his issue, 16th on the night. Two RCR cars here in a row, Austin Dillon 17th, Daniel Hemrick 18th. Martin Truex had a very off night as well, 19th for Truex. And William Byron, the fourth Hendrick car down here in 20th. 21st through 30th, Ryan Newman in 23rd, Paul Menard down here in the 24th position, Bubba Wallace landed in 29th, and Kyle Busch down here two laps down in the 30th position. Not a good night for Kyle Busch. Final page, 31st through 40th, Ryan Blaney had his issues late, 32nd on the night for Ryan Blaney. Matt DiBenedetto, after his engine expired, he came home in the 36th position. And that's your results from the Digital Ally 400, so let's head over to the Media Center. We'll see what Brad and his team had to say after this win. Well, it's hard to say. Uh, I'm sorry, I never heard your name. There's a fan running. I can't hear hardly anything. Uh, Briar Starr with Speedway Media. Uh, well, Briar, I think... Um, you know, it's hard to say where it'll go, but, you know, I, I feel like the season breaks down into thirds, and maybe I've, I'm repeating myself to, to some of the people in the room, but, uh, you know, you have your first third, your second third, and then, of course, the, the final part with the playoffs. And uh, with that in mind, Kansas is kind of like, to me, a break point between the end of the first third of the season and the beginning of the, the middle, middle stretch. And uh, I think we really see uh, kind of things kind of settle out by then you know the west coast swing at the start of the season there's a lot of comes and goes and trying to understand the rules and the new uh, and all the engineering behind it uh, is a little bit tough but uh, when we get to this part of the season i think uh, you really have to shine because this is what you've got um, so it's nice to be able to win uh, right right here today and, and of course it's always nice to win but uh, in light of, of those thoughts uh, or beliefs i guess uh, it, it's a good sign for us for sure uh, it was a tough night. I mean, we were we were off quite a bit to start the race, and um, I think to Brad's point, you know, we're, we're far enough along in the season now where it seems like a lot of guys are starting to figure out where they want to be. You know, we we won some races early in the season, and I think the the mile and a half early in the year we were pretty strong. I think all the Penske cars were, but you know now you look and the Stuart Haas cars and the Hendrick cars are really strong. So um, it's a lot. None of these races are easy to win by any means, but um, it's tough right now. Tonight was a tough night, and um, you weren't going to get away with a car that was off a little bit, and that's where we were at the start of the race. Um, our balance wasn't right. We couldn't keep the throttle down, and um, we worked hard. It, it took a while. The car wasn't responding uh, early on, and um, like Brad said, I think after the uh, second stage or the final 100 laps, we finally got it tight enough. Um, where we were able to put some good laps together and then then it's just working the draft and all those things on the restarts which we were able to do really well at the end. All right, so let's take a look at your playoff grid before wrapping up here tonight. A little bit of moving and shaking here. Uh, Clint Boyer up one over Ryan Blaney into the ninth position this week, dropping Blaney back to 10th. Alex Bowman jumps over Daniel Suarez into the 12th position. Eric Jones back up two spots to the 14th position. Jimmy Johnson Back into a playoff spot there in 16th. Ryan Newman dropping three this week out of the playoffs down to 17th. Otherwise, everybody else staying pretty well stationary this week. A little bit of moving, obviously, in the winner's column as Brad Keselowski moves up into the three-win club with Kyle Busch. But otherwise, uh, not a lot changing on that end of things this week. But I think we're a little more solidifying our playoff contenders at this point. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of moving down around the cutoff line, but I think for the most part, we've got a look here at who most of your playoff contenders this year are going to be. I think we might have a surprise winner or two as we get through the season, but otherwise, 
I think these are at least the guys that are going to be competing to get into the chase. I don't think we're going to have any real surprises jumping up here that aren't in the top 20 at this point. But that is your look at the playoff grid following the Digital Ally 400 from Kansas. And I believe that'll do it for us on this week's Cup Rewind. Got a k and Rewind coming up uh, probably late tonight would be my guess. Um, depending on how schedules shake out uh, for exactly when I can get that done. Um, then pole position coming up as usual Monday evening 8 p.m. Eastern to recap you on everything that happened this weekend in the world of motorsports. We got a lot happening this weekend, not just in NASCAR. So there's a lot to talk about there on pole position this week. And then we're back live at the track this coming weekend from Toledo with the Arkham Menard series. Haley Deegan's debut in Arca, so it's going to be a big weekend out there. And it uh, should be a fun time. Toledo is always a fun track. So uh, we got lots coming up for you in the next week or so here on RNN. So if you haven't done it already, you need to go down below, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward here on RNN. While you're down there, why don't you hit that big thumbs up button if you like the video. It is much appreciated when you do. So with that, this has been the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.